When El Salvador made their big announcement last year, we were over, you know, we were headquartered in Guatemala and we crossed over the border and there was, there was all this hype about making illegal tender, but how are any of these businesses going to accept Bitcoin payments? People immediately just go, oh, Ibex, that's the merchant solution. But that's actually just a small piece of what we do. We're opening up a new era of global commerce um, with Lightning. Instead of scanning a QR code and you pay a hundred bucks, well, what if you can scan a QR code and get 10 bucks? Right. So you can put something on next home run that hits the first 20 people to scan the QR code, make buy enough or get enough money to buy their next beer, $10 for the next 10 people, or the, you know, the first 10 people to scan after the home run. Now you're turning advertising dollars directly into your consumer's pockets. There's a whole bunch of ranchers out there that are really into this peer to peer food transfer. And what better, you know, form of money to buy beef with than Bitcoin? Because it's peer-to-peer -peer money and peer-to-peer -peer beef. You, you see it out there and there's people that are so hardcore that they're so right about this and anti everything else. Well, how can we ever be, how can you ever be someone that doesn't believe there could be another horse in the race? If we do that, we're just ignorant, right? And I don't believe there is right now, but it doesn't mean there can never be. Rye Sterling is the VP of North America at Ibex Mercado. Ibex right now has two main business lines. One is a tool for any merchant to accept Bitcoin over the Lightning Network. And another is their infrastructure platform that is gonna enable anyone to spin up brand new Lightning use cases. In our discussion, Rai explained the vision for Ibex Mercado as a business. We explored some of the emerging Lightning use cases that Rai is really excited about. And we discussed adoption of Lightning in El Salvador and globally. Rai has also asked to have his share of today's show splits donated to the Human Rights Foundation. So if you enjoy this show and if you learn something new, the best way you can support myself and the Human Rights Foundation is by sending in sats over the Lightning Network. Half go to me, half go to Human Rights Foundation. And anyone can use any podcasting 2.0 app to do this. But my favorite to use to send sats is Fountain. Just a quick message before we get into the episode. Today's show is sponsored by Voltage. Voltage is the industry standard and next generation provider for Lightning Network infrastructure. Today's show is also sponsored by Stackwork. Stackwork is a Lightning powered transcription tool that takes the best of AIs and humans to create better, faster, and less expensive transcripts. We'll have more from Voltage and Stackwork later in the show. Rai, welcome to the show and thank you for taking the time. I have got a ton of questions about Ibex for you, but before we get into it, why don't we start with a background? Tell listeners a little bit more about your background in Bitcoin, how you discovered Lightning and uh, you know how you, how you joined Ibex. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks for having me on, Kevin. Um, uh, I'd love to share more and tell you about the my Ibex journey as well as Ibex journey. Um, I come from eight years of enterprise software sales, um, where I was an entrepreneur, founder of uh, specific software for industrial suppliers. Um, very unsexy industry, but uh, taught and kind of cut my teeth on implementation of enterprise um, grade solutions. And then uh, my Bitcoin journey started like a lot of others where um, it was back in 2017 and there was a lot of hype around it. And uh, there was a lot of altcoin people, you know, getting get, making money quick and got to buy crypto. And so uh, I jumped in and I put some money in Bitcoin and some altcoins and um, got my uh, master class at Altcoin University, which uh, took all my money. Uh, and the, the remainder was uh, Bitcoin um, that was left. So I kind of just left it there, um, forgot about it, um, just kind of figured, you know, at this point, I lost two thirds of the money I put in, might as well just lose the rest or just forget about it and see what happens. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't going to pull out at that point, um, having suffered such terrible losses. And then, uh, fast forward to, uh, last year I was, um, in New York city and, uh, I met with, uh, the, the chief strategy officer for Ibex, uh, Alvaro Sol and the CEO, Jose Lemos. Um, and they showed me a demo of their Ibex pay, uh, lightning solution. And I had read a lot of white papers um, and all the white papers, I always like to say, did white paper things, you know, in theory and concept. Okay, sounds great. But I'd never seen an actual product in the space. 
Um, so, you know, coming from a software background and seeing a tangible product there in front of me, I was very intrigued. And then I was also blown away about by the speed and simplicity of the product that they showed me. So we, you know, we got to talking a little bit more and, um, uh, decided that, uh, I'd like to, uh, come on board and maybe help out with their expansion plans for North America. Uh, and that kind of what kicked me off. So I would say my orange pilling journey started in reverse and it started with lightning. And from there and seeing that tangible product, that's when I spent the time to actually learn about Bitcoin and went down the rabbit hole and, and orange pilled myself. But had I not seen the, uh, lightning demo and seen that, you know, tangible use case, I don't know if I would have put in that time and, or, or I'm sure I would have eventually, but it, it kind of fast tracked it to, wow, there's something here. Um, and then with the cross border, cross currency, um, micro payments, um, which I was shown, that's when I was, I really, really kind of perked up and said, wow, this is, this is world changing. Um, and so, yeah, I that's see. how the journey began. So was that, that, that cross border payments, was that the specific, was it like a light bulb moment for you or you said, yeah, I mean, it, work the, the simplicity real? of the tech was there, but then also once you start learning about the liquidity pools of Bitcoin and which allows for these, you know, these worldwide transactions to go on and then start learning about how lightning works with a T minus zero transaction speed, um, you know, locking in the price of Bitcoin, transferring it over lightning instantly, and then selling it for another currency on the other side. That to me, with siblings that live in three different continents, uh, you know, Japan, Norway, and um, well, I guess two different continents, but Japan, Norway, and uh, England, I send, I've, I've had to send money or, you know, you want to buy your mama a Christmas gift and your siblings live overseas. Well, it turns out my, my running balance is, you know, a thousand dollars to the, the, the money they've sent just because it's always, oh, there's transfer fees and there's this and that. And it's always like, oh, don't worry about it. I'll buy it from mom and you get me next time. But, you know, three siblings living abroad that those add up after, you know, multiple birthdays and Christmases. And it's always seems to tie back to the, why would I spend, you know, send 40 bucks or 50 bucks and then spay, you know, spend 10, $20 on fees. Um, so yeah. just from a personal level, I was like, called them all up. I was like, Hey, buy some Bitcoin. You're sending me your money. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, Makes sense. Yeah. So let's give listeners a little background now on, on Ibex as mm -hmm. a company. What, what is the, the vision for the company here? Can you describe some of the products you're working on? Mm -hmm. Sure. Absolutely. So Ibex is first and foremost, um, a lightning network uh, enterprise grade solution. So what does that mean? That means we provide B2B lightning infrastructure to businesses that want to develop and incorporate lightning into their companies, applications, etc. So we break it down into two products. We have Ibex Hub and then we have Ibex Pay. Well, we really have three products. We have Ibex Hub, Ibex Pay, and then DWM. Digital Wealth Management is a bunch of financial tools. Um, it's for ultra high net worth investors who want to buy Bitcoin and have kind of a, a white glove service going along with it and doing things such as estate planning, et cetera. No one thinks about what happens when people pass, you know, what happens to their Bitcoin keys? How do you make sure those are handed down in a, in a proper manner? All that kind of white glove service for uh, high net worth individuals is done, and that's led by uh, Rodrigo um, and, and our digital wealth management division. So then we have Ibex Hub. Ibex Hub is our B2B infrastructure product. Um, again, this is for developers and enterprises that want to incorporate Lightning directly into their products. Um, and then we have Ibex Pay, and Ibex Pay is actually just a derivative of Ibex Hub. It's something that we built off of our Ibex Hub technology, and we created a um, a, a, a product uh, that allows any merchant to accept Bitcoin at their uh, either retail or e-commerce uh, location. Um, and so that was kind of where the, the, the kickoff for El Salvador happened is um, when El Salvador made their big announcement last year, we were over, you know, we were headquartered in Guatemala and we crossed over the border and there was, there was all this hype about making a legal tender, but how are any of these businesses going to accept Bitcoin payments. They could give away $30 to every citizen, but if every citizen had the $30 in their Chiba wallet, where were they going to go to spend it? And none of these businesses had the infrastructure for that. So um, our CTO, who, who's phenomenal, he created um, with his team the Ibex Pay, you know, 
prototype, um, which is now on version two, um, which has many more features than the first day, like a tip feature, uh, you know, some custom branded BPTs or, you know, ability to kind of brand it toward your business and et cetera, et cetera. But um, that's where that kind of product came to be. So Ibex Pay is kind of our grassroots marketing, boots on the ground, merchant vendor uh, product that we, we used as a use case for Ibex Hub. Ibex Hub is, you know, our a, that's kind of the core of our business and that's for wallets, exchanges, point of sale systems, um, payments companies uh, that want to replace their kind of legacy infrastructure rails with modern Lightning rails. Um, at the end of the day, Lightning is really just a faster, cheaper, safer way to move money. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have people knowing they're transacting in Lightning or Bitcoin, um, it could be fiat to fiat, but using Lightning Rails. So there's a ton of use cases and applications um, for the hub product and, and Lightning infrastructure. Right. right. So do you feel like over time, uh, Ibex's vision is going to shift towards, like the core of the business is going to be this hub and pay is just simply one application of which there mm -hmm. will be many. Mm -hmm. connected to that hub is yeah. that right it's funny because you know one we have a, a phenomenal biz dev for ibex pay she is boots on the ground she's at every bitcoin meetup she's traveling around the country and we started an ibex pay ambassador program so if you're interested in onboarding your local communities etc you can sign up people with uh, ibex pay and there's a financial reward for doing so and because we have such an amazing biz dev person on this and because it's so grassroots people immediately just go, oh, Ibex, that's the merchant solution. But that's actually just a small piece of what we do. I mean, it's in terms of marketing and education and presence, it's it makes up a, a lot of noise and, and it has great traction and, and, it, and it's doing really well. But our core business is our infrastructure product um, for enterprise solution. Right. Are there any other applications you're specifically excited about that, that people could use your infrastructure for in addition to things, in addition to the merchant solution, like what else comes to mind when you think about the things someone might do with Ibex Hub? In I think our um, most ex exciting next product in the pipeline is uh, Ibex.cash or Ibex Cash. Um, and that's going to be our remittance solution. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of interest right now. I mean, you know, remittance is kind of the, um, what do you call it? The, the holy grail of, of money movements and how do you how do you make that better for people and so that's the next product we'll be releasing off of ibex hub um, and we're very excited for that but then i think one that is is missed or, or not even thought of and and it's something that is only capable with lightning right is the ability to move money and micro micro payments of money so quickly you can now start gamifying money in a way and what do i mean by that Take sports, for instance. You're sitting at a baseball game, and we actually um, were partnered with the Perth Heat, which was the first uh, baseball team in the world with a chief Bitcoin officer. Um, so, they, you know, they've got the Bitcoin B on their jerseys, and uh, little known fact, but, or maybe little known fact in the US, but Perth Heat is uh, the leading. Um, the leading, uh, I guess, recruiter or recruitment uh, team for the MLB over here in the States out of Australia. So a lot of um, World Series players have come through the Perth Heat and headed over to the States or they go there for, you know, their their B League first and then they, they move on up. So Perth Heat does a lot of movement there. But think about sitting there in your, you know, baseball seat and baseball is kind of a, you know, it's, it's more of an a experience game. It's not necessarily to watch the game. It's, you know, there's it's a little slow. Well, now what if you say, um, with LNURL technology, LNURL withdrawal, where you can, instead of scanning a QR code and you pay a hundred bucks, well, what if you can scan a QR code and get 10 bucks, right? So you can put something on next home run that hits the first 20 people to scan the QR code, make, buy enough or get enough money to buy their next beer, $10 for the next 10 people, or the, you know, the first 10 people to scan after the home run, boom, you know, you're, you're engaging the fans. They, they want to see what's going to happen next. Okay. The next home, uh, the next, uh, the next, um, walk off Homer or a uh, grand slam that happens, we're going to give away, um, a thousand dollars to the one person. And you can set, you can set and play with these, these thresholds and these voucher thresholds with lightning in a way you can't do before. Also, you could do like micro experiences where, you know, you're, you're bidding 
cents. You can say two cents. I'm going to put two cents in the, and as you know, and every, all 50,000 fans in the stadium could kind of bid to which song is going to play next. Is it going to be sweet Carolina or a sweet child of mine? And whoever gets to the top of the meter first, boom, that's the song that plays or it triggers fireworks or, and these are again, micro payments um, that you, you, you know, you, you can't do with anything else. So I think the gamifying of money and for engagement, um, you see what Live Golf is doing and how they're kind of taking on the PGA right now. What are they doing? They're doing more group events, more team sports, more engagement with the fans, you know, vote who you want to go ahead and, and drive next on the team. Those type of things are going to be transferred into money as well. Um, right. and kind of take down like the legacy structure of sports and traditional money movement. So a whole spectrum of things I'm excited for, but those would, I'd say remittance and gamifying money would be my top two. That's fascinating. Yeah. I want to get into remittances in a minute, but let's, let's focus on this gamifying money concept because, <laughs> you know, I, I think this is, a, there's some really cool applications here. The one you mentioned of, of like the, you know, a QR code pops up on the screen and all of a sudden you can like bid on things and vote on things. I think that's really cool. It also, it made me think about, you know, what does that do to like traditional out of home advertising? Like mm -hmm. billboards everywhere mm -hmm. are kind of like these ugly things are kind of ignored. They're not really like, they're, they're not very interactive. They're, they're not much, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. There's not much enthusiasm behind them, but mm -hmm. you can start to think about the ways in which you can uh, gamify that. Yeah. yeah and just like change the way. Coca-Cola is the, the the game, the headline sponsor for, you know, the the the, the event and they're going to give away X amount. And, you know, you can now you're turning advertising dollars directly into your consumer's pockets, which is going to turn them yes. around and want to spend on your product. So it's not just, oh, I saw it and it's brand awareness. No, it's brand awareness. Plus, there's an incentive behind paying attention. Right. And so then then being able to reward the people who are paying attention directly. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I don't think has ever been possible before in mm -hmm. advertising. Mm -hmm. uh, at least I don't know any good examples of it. Like what we're seeing now, we're seeing it in the digital world with, with things like Fountain and Sacker News starting to reward users for, for you know, listening to ads on Fountain or, um, you know, job postings on Sacker News, things like that. Mm -hmm. There's a new app called Slice that just came out that's basically like you, you earn for the ads that you view. Hmm. And I, I think like that's happening in the digital world, but when that goes to the physical world too, then it's like anytime mm -hmm. anyone's interacting with some advertisement, they, they now have skin in the game. They have like mm -hmm. some potential upside there. Yeah. And, so and even if really they don't win, win they, they engaged. It brought the engagement. Uh, yeah. Then, you know, I don't have an advertising background, but I can tell you, you know, people like free money, <laughs> yeah. especially if they're going to invest in a product or, or spend their time exploring whether they're going to purchase a product or not. It's definitely an incentive. Are there any particular uh, campaign ideas or anything you've heard from the Perth Heat or anyone else in the industry, you know, thinking about what they could do with a QR code on a, on a billboard or on a banner or something like that. Mm -hmm. and well, making a physical the, the simplest uh, is obviously the, the, the money giveaway, right? Buy your next hot dog uh, on the Perth heat and, you know, put an X amount on there. But there, there's also the idea of LNAs, which is lightning native assets. It's kind of like an NFT, but with lightning, that's probably a year away, but you could auction off the game ball. All right, or not auction off, but give it away. So the, home, the grand slam is hit. First person to capture the QR code gets that game ball. Um, and then uh, we also have, because I just said auction, um, and I didn't mean to, but we also have auction capability, right? So, um, you know, you have two, two sides voting on something and the side that gets to the top, uh, you know, they are the, the, the person who wins the auction, obviously, and every, all the other sats are returned and sats escrow. Um, so things like that will, will also come into play. Fundraisers, that's another one. So we had, um, we were thinking for the Amsterdam conference, and I don't think we're going to do this yet, but maybe for BTC 2023 in Miami, we'll do it that the speakers on the panels can put in their favorite charity or something. Um, and people can donate to those speakers as they speak via online, because a lot of people are, you know, watching from around the world and the people in the audience, they can donate to whoever, whichever speaker they think was best. And whoever, I guess, gets the most donations, all the speakers in the panel, all the money that they were going to go to their charities will go to the one charity, or we can split it up to all four charities if there's four speakers, but you know, that type of fundraising as well, um, 
And I know yeah. uh, BTC Magazine just did something recently with the Hoddle Knot um, uh, campaign. And so there's there's all sorts of people now picking up these new ways to, to I guess, put on these not events, but activations. Mm -hmm. And that's fascinating uh, to be able to make that donation, if, whether you're live watching an event or you're, mm -hmm. you're streaming it. Mm -hmm. um, like, again, we've just never had that capacity. Yeah, and that's another that. thing back to the sports, right? Is like, you, you know, Perth Heat is viewed worldwide. There's a lot of um, Asian countries where there's a lot of talent that goes down and plays Perth Heat and vice versa. And there's a huge fan base within um, Japan uh, for baseball. So you have a lot of people viewing this stuff online. And there's, and you know, just online uh, video content has, has been booming forever, live streams, et cetera. Um, so to be able to broadcast one QR code for those, you know, those people, and then another one on the Jumbotron and to be able to create this engagement, not just on the field, but around the world and, you know, more people tuning in because of these little activations uh, to really grow the brand. Yeah, that's really incredible. Uh, you got my mind spinning with ideas. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> but I want to I want to go into uh, remittances next and mm -hmm. discuss this Ibex cash product, and I'd love to learn more about like how how you plan to you know transfer assets between different fiat currencies and Bitcoin. How how does that all work? Um, and how do you turn that into a solution that anyone can use? Right. So there's the t technical side of it. Um, I won't dive too deep into it. One, I'm not the person to to really give you a, a to the proper. Uh, lesson on it and i would leave that to our cto but from a very basic um fundamentals there's a there's some buy sell buy sells going on in there uh, obviously over the lightning network to to get it to the right place but then it's also finding the right partners in the regions you're looking to do this with um because at the end of the day you can move money anywhere right now via a lightning wallet to a lightning wallet like i said i can send my siblings money they send me money via lightning right now uh, Bitcoin. And I get it instantly. You owe me 50 bucks for mom's birthday present. Boom. I got it. Um, but once you start talking about the off ramp, right, because it's in Bitcoin now in my sister's wallet in Japan, but well, then how does she get Japanese yen? Well, she needs to find somewhere. I mean, obviously there's exchanges that she can send it through, but what if um, you want to take out cash somewhere? So I say you're in Africa or Haiti or somewhere in Latam where someone sent you money, but now you, you don't have an exchange to go to and you want to have a cash off ramp. Well, who are your partners going to be there? So, and then also on, on the, the reverse side, the cash in, you know, where are these um, say day workers in Miami? who don't have bank accounts or addresses because they just settled and, and they don't have the ability to set up, you know, a bank account right, you know, yet. Um, and they've come across this lightning capability to do remittances. Well, where are they going to go to give the hundred dollars to send money home? Um, you know, is it going to be the corner store? Is it a specific place? Is it an app? Uh, and then if it's just cash, and they don't have a bank account. Well, then they can't get the app. So they have to go somewhere physically. And where is that physical location be? So finding the cash in cash out part is kind of the hardest part. It's not it's not just the rails of moving money. That's the easy part. Um, it's finding the partners that are able to help you with the cash in cash out. What has been the biggest challenge in finding those partners and getting, you know, building up enough of them to to support this product? Well, really, um, the, the product came to us because of outreach by our partners. Right. Um, so we're not really Ibex is with lightning anything's possible if there's movement of money it's possible and now because we have new like i said this you know the game of finding money there's now new ways to play with money um so you have even more use cases for money but in general money is applicable to everything you know whether you're whatever industry you're in you touch money so um that's been i think a a um a challenge, and I think all companies in the space are facing it, is where do we focus our efforts? Where is the adoption going to be first? Where is the maximum um, value going to be be given for um, for for our efforts? And you know, just for Ibex Pay, which you know, to tie back that, move away from remittance for a second. We found out uh, after you know four or five months um, that the restaurant industry, while it's great to get a bunch of restaurants signed up on on Ibex. It's a hard industry to take on for really anything, uh, you know, just because the turnover in the industry, um, you know, the training involved, the 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 presence that is required. It's a very simple application, but not every manager who's fired tells the next manager, hey, make sure you train your employees on IVEX pay. 
or, right. hey, we accept Bitcoin here. So it starts to fall off the map and then they don't charge the device or whatever. And it's just like, it's just too chaotic. But then we found via the Beef Initiative, uh, which is a, it's a great effort that we sponsor, which is peer-to-peer -peer beef, that there's a whole bunch of ranchers out there that are really into this peer-to-peer -peer food transfer. And what better you know, form money to buy beef with than Bitcoin because it's peer to peer money and peer to peer beef. Like it's a no brainer. So now two of our top clients within Ibex pay, um, in our monthly transaction volumes are, are processors and, and ranchers, um, which we didn't see coming. So it's finding the, 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 the niche or the market that's going to, you know, most attractive products. So with remittance, we had those people come to us. They heard about us via the Bitcoin conference last year or from our efforts in El Salvador. And, uh, hey, can you help us? And so we recently, um, we recently uh, onboarded Osmo, which is a, it's, um, they also own a lot of the Western unions, I believe, in LATAM. And they have 8,000 cash out points in uh, Latin America. So now you can send money from the States um, and there's 8,000 different locations, which you can now go with your lightning balance, say, Hey, I want a hundred dollars back. You send them your lightning and they give you back your cash. Right. And so these, these cash out locations, these would be like corner shops and things like that mm -hmm. in, in a bunch exactly. of different countries in mm -hmm. Latin America. It's, and it's hard for us as Americans to understand like what a need this is, right. You know, we're used to our credit cards and our debit cards and, and, you know, Africa, for instance, there's only 16% of the population uh, has any card use at all. I mean, they're the lowest card use in the world. So, which is why it's a right market to just kind of skip over and go right to digital currency, right? Because they don't have all these entrenched systems. But for the US, you know, sending money home isn't, you know, uh, something that we think of on a day to day if you grew up here. Um, but if you're from another country and, and you're supporting your family back home, that's uh, it's it's something you have to think about every day. And with the current um, spread with remittance fees, we get, let's just say we can do a lot better for the people. Um, there's a lot of that you know we see everything between the ranges of ten percent to thirty percent for some countries, depending on the amount of money that you're moving. And if you're sending grandma 100 bucks and she's only getting 80 on the other side, that's not very fair to grandma, especially if she's got to get on a bus, go two hours, go to the cash out point, And then you're in a country where maybe it's a little bit more dangerous. So you're risking grandma's security now to get the 100 bucks and she's got to travel all the way back home. With Lightning, you can kind of uh, remove a lot of those steps. Right. Do you think Lightning adoption is going to primarily come from uh, the examples you just mentioned where someone needs to be able to send money, they, they have a use case already and they just, it's not being met right now, mm -hmm. or is it going to come from primarily the new things you can do on lightning that never existed before? They're not current needs, but they will be future use cases. Like the, the, you know, the discussion about, um, putting QR codes on, on banners and things like that. Like that's, that'll be new stuff. Mm -hmm. um, where, where does most of the adoption come from? Do you think existing? I think most of the adoption will come out of necessity. Um, okay. I think that's where we'll see the big, the other stuff is cool and it's fun and it's, and it's great for us. But when you have countries that really need a better solution, um, with large populations, I think that's where you'll see the adoption. And right. I think, I think the quickest adoption is why Ibex hub is our core, our core product is we're not out there to, you know, compete really with, with anyone other than giving them, we want them to have a better solution to how they move money. So if you are a payments company already, um, you're a payment stack company where you provide, hey, you can, you know, if you plug in with us, you get PayPal, Amazon Pay, and you can select all the different payment options you want. You can also select pay with Bitcoin. And we just add to their stack. So now any vendor out there can add pay with Bitcoin to their site. Um, those giving the the tools and the technology to enterprises already that already have the customer bases uh, or customer base is really going to be where we see the adoption happening so if you're a payments company um you might replace your legacy uh, payment rails with lightning but your end users might not see any change mm -hmm. the ui ux everything will be the same you're now just moving your money cheaper and faster on the backside, which right. hopefully in turn comes down to lowering fees for the end user and when you think about the business opportunity for Ibex, is that going to be a bigger portion of the pie where you, where you actually are doing these like behind the scenes transactions that consumers that's, don't know about? That's yeah. Like I said, pay is very much marketing education and you know what marketing is. It's a, it's a cost, <laughs> um, right. a necessary cost, but it's marketing and education and it gets the name out there. And we've been able to connect with a 
an amazing group of grassroots people around the U.S. I mean, we targeted, um, you know, we wanted to speak to every Bitcoin meetup across the U.S. and see what they were doing. And, it, and a lot of our ambassadors came from those meetups and it was just onboard your local meetup. Wherever you guys have your local meetup, just on board there. And from that, it kind of spread like the, you know, the lightning network. And, you know, there's all these nodes you see with all the lines and the kind of the electrical electrical pulse between them. Very similar with our grassroots movement. And because of that, we've now met so many people from so many different industries that are that are now more knowledgeable about lightning that want to adopt it into their businesses. And then they're actually some of them are bringing us hub clients as well. They're saying, hey, there's this there's this e-commerce slash ERP company that does accounting software and they want to give um, a plug into, uh, you know, their thousand customers and they they're mainly in, say, um, you know, anything from ammo sales to jewelry sales. I mean, it's it's, it's a smaller toned down Shopify, but with a bigger, uh, I guess, each client with a bigger you know, revenue. So there's all these niche industries. And now we have some of these ambassadors coming and bringing us hub clients. But yes, the I would say 80 five percent of our our business um, projection is through hub. Right. Uh, what were some of the big lessons you learned in this like grassroots initiative? Like if you were to go back and do it again and kind of reach out to everyone, what would you do differently? I would not focus so much on the people that had no interest. Um, and why would I focus on those to begin with? Well, when I first started uh, and I was pushing IBEX pay um, before the Miami conference, we were trying to onboard as many merchants in Miami as possible. Now Miami is kind of a altcoin city, unfortunately, right now, and they're 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 coming around. The mayor says we're going to be a Bitcoin city, but if you've walked around Miami, you see there's a lot of there's a lot of people there that, that might be in uh, that are making a little bit more money in these in these other coins, um, and they haven't really started focusing on Bitcoin yet or the seriousness of Bitcoin. But uh, so there's a lot of distractions there, I think, um, when it comes to cryptocurrencies. So when you speak to a local restaurant or merchant from there, they've they've heard of crypto, but they have no, no idea the difference between Bitcoin and crypto, uh, yeah. which I think we need to start clarifying or making at least a distinction moving forward. Yes, Bitcoin is crypto, but we have to make the distinction between centralized, decentralized, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and uh, so there was a lot of um, owners that wanted us to come in two or three times to explain to them why they should take Bitcoin. And, and for us, it was a very simple pitch. Hey, you got 30,000 people coming in from around the world to attend this conference. Um, they're here. They're going to spend their Bitcoin. They want to go to Bitcoin places. There's no chargebacks, you know, which a lot of people in Miami deal with. They have people coming from all over the world. They buy, you know, they have a dinner, they leave and they say, hey, we never ate that dinner. And then the restaurant gets dinged. Um, so no chargebacks. Uh, a, a, another way to open your door to new customers was kind of a pitch. And we're bringing the customers to you. The conference is going to be here. But even with that, we found these guys were resistant. It's almost like we we're trying to sell them something, but it's a free solution. You just sign up. So we're not even selling you. And it was difficult. So all those guys that made us go through all the hoops and the loops and jump, uh, jump when they said jump, they ended up not using the system at all. One, because they didn't train their employees. They just thought that if they turned it on, people were going to come. They didn't put the sticker in their door. They didn't bother to learn about Bitcoin. They didn't continue their journey after what we told them. So I'd skip over all those people right away. And then you had the business owners that were interested. They didn't know much about it, but they were willing to learn. And they put the sticker in the door. They trained their employees and they saw some transaction volume. Um, it wasn't you know, meteoric or anything, but they got volume because they put in the work. And you know, it all ties back to that proof of work. And then you had the... Um, the OG Bitcoiners that own the restaurants that are already Bitcoiners, they had the stickers, not just on the door, but they put them over the MasterCard Visa sticker. They put them behind the register. They kind of like, you know, they, they, they kind of grill a warfare, the restaurant into a Bitcoin. You know, they put the Bitcoin standard on the shelf behind the register. And those guys are seeing four to five percent of their revenue done in Bitcoin because they put the presence out there. And then also they they train their staff. So I got to give a shout out to John from Takiza in Miami Beach. He started a monthly book club where he made his employees read the Bitcoin standard. Um, and they'd meet at the end of the month and they talk about it. And he told me two things that I found very striking. One, um, well, obviously, when a customer walks through the door and they say, hey, I want to pay with Bitcoin, they knew the difference between Lightning and on-chain. 
And they say, hey, no, you can't use your Coinbase, but if you download a wallet of Satoshi or a Moon wallet or whatever, and his employees already knew that. And these are people at, at, a, at a fast, casual, over-the-counter establishment, and they're speaking knowledgeably about Bitcoin because he, he, he took the time and the effort to train his employees. But he also made them feel part of it. And another thing he said is that he had never, he'd never had such low employee turnover because he, his employees felt that, they, that he cared about their financial future. He taught him something and said, hey, you need to know this for your financial future, whether you're going to stay here or not, you should learn about this. And I'm going to help you learn about this. And we're going to make this part of my business. And when he did that, his people stuck around because he, they knew that he cared about them. So that's, it's kind of a feel good story. But things I would do different is I would um, lean more to Satoshi Nakamoto's words of, you know, I don't have the time to convince you. You know, you have to get there on your own. Same would apply with, uh, with um, Ibex. I hope you're enjoying the show so far. I just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Voltage. Voltage is the industry standard for Lightning Network infrastructure. Creating layer two applications and services on top of Bitcoin starts with Voltage, where you can spin up nodes, get access to liquidity, optimize your node, and much more. Voltage is leading the way as the next generation provider of Lightning Network infrastructure. And if you want to get a free trial and start using Voltage today, you can do so at voltage.cloud. How do you get more merchants to take that 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 position that you mentioned, the, the merchant in Miami took, mm -hmm. where he took the time to train all his employees, he put Bitcoin prominently displayed all throughout the restaurant, and how do you get people from the stage of like, they're interested in learning about it to now I'm a full-blown, you know, I'm a I'm believer in this system, I, I know, the Lightning Network's going to save me some money. I know, like, how, how do you make that transition? Someone who is interested, not someone who's, you know, yeah. not, not interested at all. It's just education, 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 joining the group, going to your local Bitcoin meetup, learning more. You know, I know I was kind of reluctant at the start, even though, you know, I was joining a, a Bitcoin company. I started forcing myself to go to those events. Um, I, I was never what I would consider a crypto guy or, you know, I didn't have, I don't know, I kind of just looked at all this as like a cult, you know, and, and now I'm in the cult and I'm heavily in the cult <laughs> and, and I'm very happy to be in it, you know, but I think getting out of your comfort zone and making that leap into learning more about it and truly understanding it, it's hard to, it's hard to come out of the hole once you're in it, right? That's, that's like the beauty of this. Um, but, uh, yeah, I would say education and then just try, just, just, just put the effort out there people will come um and yeah yeah now team. among the the merchants that have used ibex uh in miami and abroad um what are they gravitating to mostly because because lightning offers like a few different uh improvements right there's improvements to privacy there's improvements to settlement speed there's often improvements to fees uh are there any particular verticals in which merchants are like that's really doing it for me I, that's why i need it there's a there's a one interesting use case tattoo shops um we saw kind of a, a jump in those mainly because of the no chargebacks and huh. i had never realized how many people get permanent indelible ink put on their bodies and then call up their credit card processor companies and say we never got the inked and it happens all the time um so you know the no chargebacks yeah. was a big one um, and then we also charge 0.5% if you keep Bitcoin and 1% if you want to take USD. So that's another selling point to all of our US merchants is, hey, even if you don't want the Bitcoin, you just want to open up your door to a new audience, we'll take the Bitcoin, we'll send you the USD equivalent of what you charged, and we'll send it to you within 24 hours. So you, there's no, there's the only thing you're doing is you're just opening a new customer base. That's it. Um, and, and giving them that option and that freedom to maybe continue to learn about Bitcoin and understand the volatility and why they should do it before they have to experience the volatility is, is very powerful. Um, and then also these, you know, some people had the eureka moment where we're going to push this more, even though we're not Bitcoiners, but the more people we get in, spend in Bitcoin, even if we take 100% USD, we're charging 1%. Well, we get charged 2.5 or 3% for our credit card fees. So the more people we push to spend Bitcoin, the more money we save. So even if they weren't Bitcoiners, some restaurants did the math. They're like, wait, we'll make money or we'll save money or, or we'll add money to our bottom line, the more Bitcoin we accept. And so you saw them put a little, you know, a few more stickers in the door. Um, yeah. the whole, it just, does, just doesn't hurt the bottom line. Right. I, I feel like that is, that to me is surprising that restaurants everywhere haven't quite clued in 
to okay. this and, and that's and this is going to be a shout out to toast and clover and the rest of those uh, aloha and the rest of the point of sale systems and restaurants I think what's going on is people just don't realize they can spend in Lightning yet or that they can spend their Bitcoin. So a lot of people have Coinbase wallets. A lot of people just bought like I bought in 2017 and sitting on some wallet on their phone and they they have no idea that Lightning exists, right? So that's why they're not going into their local establishments and asking, you know, okay, can I spend in Bitcoin? But even Bitcoiners, they don't, I mean, a solution like Ibex Pay is, is there's not too many of them out there. Um, there's, there's, you can count on one hand or three fingers, you know, the amount of people actually doing the service for the world. And even Bitcoiners at the local meetups don't realize that there's places in Miami that you can go spend your Bitcoin. Um, and so these people aren't walking into these restaurants and saying, hey, can I spend in Bitcoin? Because they just don't think it's a possibility. And because of that, the restaurants then aren't funneling the information to Toast and Clover and these these point of sale systems that say, hey, we have customers coming in requesting it, even though there was a Deloitte study out that said 85% of all merchants by 2025 think they need to accept crypto. Well, I don't know who in those companies are are, are reading um, these reports, but they're not really listening to what consumers want. And so when, when we'll see it is when you go to a restaurant and within your toast terminal, you can hit pay with Bitcoin. And the QR code, the, the the lightning QR code pops up and you pay. And, and I think as people see the speed of that and how easy that is to do and you don't have to just run the credit card and go back and forth. And, you know, it's it's kind of a, I think that's when it'll kick in. But we need the help of um, companies like Toast and Clover, right? We, we have the infrastructure. And we give the infrastructure for free. We just, you know, and, and that's another thing. I think when Toast and Clover, they start looking at their their visa and credit card, you know, I'm sure they make a cut of their payment processor as well. But they, you know, they get a cut of each transaction. I think when they realize that, hey, we can get a larger cut because the fees for Lightning are so low, they might pull it in. But there's just very little education. Um, and, the, you know, those companies have tons of stuff going on. They're always looking for new uh innovative ways to capture customers, you know, order from the table, you know, serverless ordering and all that stuff. The last piece I would say is, you know, adding that Bitcoin feature to to their payment stack. So right now for a merchant um, who does accept uh, Bitcoin or Lightning, they're using maybe Toast or Clover for fiat payments, and then they have a separate tablet mm -hmm. or phone for so iBets. We're device agnostic, so you can put uh, an IBEX terminal on any device, Android or iOS, and it's not on the App Store. Uh, that was for a reason. Um, a lot of the countries uh, that we are developing in uh, don't have the App Store or, or don't have the full range of, of applications developed for them. Um, so we made it a responsive web app so you can save it as an app to your home screen as if it were an app you downloaded off of the, um, the app store, but it's not a, uh, not necessary that you have the app store. So they download that and it's usually on the manager's phone or the, um, they can also get a separate device. Some people get a separate tablet and they just put it in and you just create the invoice. You put in the amount uh, that you're going to charge and then you also process it through on your point of sale side. Um, and then you do your reporting at the end of the day. So it's the same thing that restaurants do with DoorDash or Uber Eats or, you know, they have the separate terminals for each one of those. The, they come in, they check the order, they cross it off as picked up. And at the end of the day, they run the reporting against their Toast or Clover or Square system. Right. Now, in, in the conversation about Toast and Clover and, and Square, um, you know, Square was one that a, a lot of people have, have thought they're going to introduce lightning payments at some point. Mm -hmm. They had Jack Dorsey and, and there was a discussion. I think he may have even said explicitly that this would happen in the future. Mm -hmm. It hasn't happened yet. Uh, what's your thoughts on why? It hasn't happened yet. I think it will. Um, I know they're focused on a, on a few other things like Web5 um, and stuff like that. Um, and that's something that I've, you know, I, I would point out to Toast and uh, Clover. Hey, guys, you can get a head start on Dorsey here. Take a little, steal a little of his thunder um, <laughs> and uh, just do a quick inter integration. Um but yeah, it, it's coming. It's it's inevitable. It will come. Um, you can't make something ten times faster and and better and and not have it be adopted. Right? It's just a matter of time. Right. Now, in the last let's say six or eight months, we've seen two different trends in Bitcoin and Lightning. One being the price of Bitcoin coming down, mm -hmm. and one another trend being Lightning adoption going up. Mm -hmm. uh, have you noticed? at IBEX, any acceleration or deceleration in the business 
uh, maybe corresponding to one of those trends? I would say we've seen acceleration. Um, I've never okay, been more bullish on what we're doing here at IBEX. Um, the main reason would be probably the education front with the crash of Luna and you know that kind of meltdown that we had a few months ago. Um, a lot of people started to distinguish the difference between Bitcoin, even though the Bitcoin price went down, um, they started to understand the difference between, say, altcoins and, you know, high yield protocols versus the slow and steady of Bitcoin. Um, so what I noticed was in these hub meetings I would have with, you know, a few different board members from another company or directors and where I used to have to explain the difference. Um, you know, because there's always one guy in the room who's like, ah, oh, Bitcoin, I don't want to deal with this, blah, 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 but he's got to show up to the meeting. Well, <laughs> you know, I don't want to deal with this crypto stuff. And you would start hearing people from their own team say, hey, it's Bitcoin, it's not crypto. You know, let's let's give these guys a listen. Um, so the 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 disting distinguishing that was no longer my job. And, and, it, and it started to be, become more and more that way um, since the last few months. And then, like you said, lightning adoption, you know, uh, a bear market like this is for us, we consider a time to build. Like, and we have so much on our plates that we're, we're kind of excited that we have this little bit of a break. But again, it, we've seen more interest now that there has been this kind of bear market. A lot of people want to build in this time. So a lot of enterprise clients, you know, like the hub product is almost perfect for a bear market because that's where everyone's coming to us and saying, hey, we want to incorporate lightning into our products. And everyone wants to build now because they feel there's going to be, you know, a bull market coming up in the next uh, year or two, and they want to be ready for it. Right. Have you seen any uh, changes to merchants willing to keep their funds in Bitcoin if they are receiving funds in Bitcoin? Because you mentioned there's a different fee structure. It's 0.5% mm -hmm. if you keep it in Bitcoin, 1% if it's in, in US dollars. Yep. Um, any changes in that transition of like who's willing to keep it in dollars and who's willing to move it to Bitcoin? No, Bitcoin? really. Um, we, we've, uh, I would designate two, di two different types of clients. We got the guys that, you know, transaction volumes aren't super high, right? You might get a couple hundred dollars a week in transactions of Bitcoin at your deli market, and it's it's not going to really affect your cash flows enough to you know want the fiat. But a lot of people, uh, you know, there's restaurants in Miami that we signed up that have investors, and they have you know they're or they're a chain, and they have people to report to, and just for the compliance or just not wanting to have to go through all the hoops and the hurdles to ask, they just want the fiat. But then you have, you know, the Bitcoiners that say, hey, no, it's not that many transactions. I'm going to be able to run my business whether I take Bitcoin or not. I want to stack Bitcoin. And so we actually allow for anywhere between zero and 100 percent of Bitcoin. So you can take 50 percent Bitcoin, 50 percent fiat. And at the point of transaction, half is charged 1 percent and half is charged 0.5 percent. And any split in between you can do. Um, and we really don't see people using that meter at all. So we have this meter. It's a cool feature, but people are either 100 percent fiat or 100% Bitcoin. I'm sure as adoption picks up and there's more people spending in it, the, the idea of the meter is, you know, say tomorrow, you know, some crazy news comes out, Bitcoin skyrockets and everyone's using lightning and all of a sudden everyone's coming to our merchants and, you know, 90% of the people are paying in lightning, which I don't think will happen tomorrow. But if that were to happen, these people are going to go, uh oh, we can't pay our employees this month. They could take the, the the meter and slide it over to you know we're going to take take ten percent um, in in Bitcoin and ninety percent fiat so we can cover our cash flows. That was kind of the thinking behind the meter. Right, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I want to shift the conversation to El Salvador specifically mm -hmm. and discuss some of the work you're doing there. Can can you start by just describing Ibex's role in El Salvador over the last year or so? Mm -hmm. It's our, our role um, is mainly from a, a merchant standpoint. Um, when when they made that big announcement, like I said, we went over there and we we developed out the original IBEX Pay solution, um, prototype 1.0. And when we did that, uh, we went to uh, we onboarded a lot of um, large um, clients. We had Subway or we have Subway, Benihana, Starbucks, Pizza Hut, uh, a whole slew of you know chains that we're familiar with in the states that are down there they onboarded to ibex and since then our journey has been uh we've kind of been copying kind of the grassroots here movement as well a lot more people obviously have heard of bitcoin in el salvador weirdly enough because of what they did but you know you would expect you know maybe the us would have more knowledge base about it but no if you're going to roll it out as legal tender in a country you're going to 
everyone's at least going to know the word Bitcoin um, and know what we're trying to do with Bitcoin. Um, so we've also been going after the grassroots efforts in El Salvador. And then another piece of our El Salvador push, and I'm going to give this all full credit to our community builder, community manager, Carlinos Torrello, um, or Torrella. Uh, he um, has been working with my first Bitcoin, um, Mi Premier Bitcoin, uh, to spread lightning education to high schoolers in El, El Salvador. Um, so we've graduated our first class of 60 in August. Um, and we just, I think it was two weeks ago, uh, graduated, the, graduated the next class of 60 students. Um, and it's very powerful when you, you, know, you have kids in high school um, from these developing countries who can open a hardware wallet, um, you know, understand what their private keys are, make a lightning transaction, understand kind of the history of money and why they need this solution. And, and they're from some rural village, you know, a couple hours outside of uh, um, El Salvador's capital. Uh, it's it's very powerful. So we're doing a lot of work on the education front there. And, you know, that is me, Premier Bitcoin's um, efforts. We are just, you know, we are just... Uh, supporting them in any way we can. And, and Carlinos is leading that charge for us. Very cool. It, so is that is that like a, a high school course that anyone in El Salvador can take or is it in specific? So right now regions? it's specific to this one um, uh, high school, but it, we are in discussions, I believe, on making it a, uh, a nationwide curriculum. I don't know the status on that, but we, we want to be able to give that curriculum to anybody who wants it. Very cool. And so every so you now had two classes that have gone through this program, mm -hmm. and now they've basically like conquered the basics of Bitcoin and, and Lightning and moving money. Is mm -hmm. that the idea? Exactly. Yeah. Very cool. What's your sentiment on like on? I remember when the Bitcoin law first went into effect, and uh, the conference last year down in El Salvador. I saw a bunch of people on Twitter saying, "Hey, look, I just paid for Starbucks uh, on Lightning." Um, what's your sentiment on like the usage? those, you know, large clients are um, getting right now in El Salvador. Is it, was that kind of like a flash in the pan kind of thing? Is it, is it sustained? Is it growing? There, there's, there's still transaction volume. It's obviously not the same as when the government gives away $33 to every citizen. Uh, you know, everybody yeah. went out, a lot, I would say, and I don't have the metrics on it, but just based off of um, something we experienced during Miami conference last year, we gave out, we partnered with Exodus Wallet and we, we gave out 10, dollars free satoshis to every attendee at the conference who wanted them um and i'm i would guess that 80 percent of those people have never bought lightning or transacted in lightning again but they did it for their first experience right well i think el salvador is similar but it's the 20 percent that you do get to catch on which is the important part and so i know that um it's it's still in adoption i i know that uh, they're still receiving transaction volume um but I would say it's more it, it it's definitely boosted their tourism, if we if you will. You're right. A lot of Bitcoiners from around the world are going there and they're saying, I want to see if I can spend enlightening in El Salvador. So in that right, sense, right. Um, it's it's definitely done wonders for the country. Right. That's very cool. Um, I want to talk about like the the aha moment with lightning and like where you think that is for a lot of people, because like, you know, you mentioned your aha moment at the beginning of the conversation. Um, I don't really remember what mine was. I first started studying it after after Jack Mahler's uh, Bitcoin speech at Bitcoin 2021. But uh, I, I get the sense that like some people get it and some people don't. And there's there's this there's a threshold at which I think you have to cross over before you go. Okay, I get it. I'm going to keep using this thing rather mm -hmm. than I'm I used it once and like I don't really want to use it again. Mm -hmm. What do you think that is? Because like we've seen this in, in digital products uh, over the last a couple decades, like famously Facebook had their get seven friends and you're going to be hooked, right? Uber had like, once you take your second ride, you're going to be hooked. What's mm -hmm. that? What's that moment for lightning? What, what do you do to hook someone? Make your, make your first lightning transaction and see the speed in which it happens and kind of see how that peer to peer instant money works. Um, I think is, is powerful. That's, I mean, again, that's what did it for me. I saw how quick and easy it was. Um, I went, wow. That's it. <laughs> that's 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 what this does. Um, so I think there's partially that, and then I think also there will be a lot of um, again back to the education. Um, 
a lot of infrastructure enterprise companies like Cash App, right? Most people that have Cash App don't realize that when they hit the little scanner button, that scanner will scan a lightning invoice. Um, so there's 80 plus million users on Cash App that can now scan any of our lightning invoices or any lightning invoice in the world and pay hey, anywhere in the world. Um, and then that's another thing, which is a big eureka moment for me and or just a, a further eureka moment, but the, um, the ability to scan an invoice, say in Japan and have it come up in your local currency, right? So I've got a cash app here in the States. I fly over to Japan. I scan a lightning invoice for a hundred yen and it shows me back in dollars how much I have, you know, just that oh. instant, that instant conversion where you're, you're, you're you're conducting business in your currency and they're conducting business in their currency and they're getting their currency value that they wanted and you're spending in what you wanted. And having that is, is pretty powerful. Yeah. So in that sense, it's kind of like, it's a, it's a bridge between fiat currencies, right? Is that, is that a way, is that fair to say, or or at least what lightning could become? It's becoming a bridge. Yeah. Right. And then also, you need to also look at lightning and it's what our CEO always uses this use case. And it's, you know, what makes email great? Well, outside of formatting and that kind of stuff, it's the fact that if you have Gmail and I have Hotmail and, and somebody else has yahoo.com, we can still all send each other emails. You're still going to get the email, right? You have Venmo or Apple Pay or any of these things. You have to have Venmo, Apple Pay or any of these things to send you send money to someone else. Well, with lightning, it's an, it's a, it's an open pasture. It's not a walled garden. It's, it's anyone can send anything from any lightning wallet to any other lightning wallet. Also for companies that incorporate lightning into say their financial platforms, well, they can now accept instantaneous payments from around the world. They're, they're, they're opening up their ecosystems to become global finance, financial players versus regional financial players. And Mm. I think that will, that will be, have major impact. Um, on the adoption. If you squint a little bit and think about what impact, uh, like what impact, like bridging fiat currencies could have to those fiat currencies, maybe like, like, what are those, what are those impacts? What will it do to, you know, countries in Latin America, if if they can now bridge into any other currency, uh, with using this, like this lightning protocol? Yep, that's that's a, that's a great question. Well, I, I keep saying we're opening up a new era of global commerce um, with Lightning, um, just because if you know, you can now get goods and services from anywhere in the world, and even if it's you know helping or paying for some creative work that you got on Fiverr, you know, across you know, the world, and say say the person produced a, a, a micro content for you, or the you know somebody in Africa drew you a picture and you want to spend four dollars on or whatever you can that person can now instantly get that money it's not going through this process and it's 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 kind of a confirmation um or a a door opener for global commerce i would say more than anything it's that's what i'm excited about and also with remittances and stuff you know if you're taking 12 or 20 percent out of money remitted to a country well you're taking that money out of the the country's gdp so if you say five cents, you're adding, or sorry, 5%, you're adding 5% back to that local region's GDP because it's money that they now have in their pocket that they can go out and spend versus money that was taken out during the transfer process. So you're mm. increasing localized or regional GDP when it comes to remittance as well. Right. And we've seen that, I think, a lot in, in El Salvador, right? Where, mm-hmm. you know, I, th- I think the quote was like 20, 25% of GDP is or was remittances. Mm-hmm. You get the sense that that has meaningfully shifted in the last year or so like has it have we had enough lightning adoption in el salvador to actually change that gdp percent that percentage well i think i think the um i i don't know the numbers on it but if 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 the remittance works the way we want it to work with lightning that 20 25 percent should go to 30 35 percent right because of the money that's being kept in the end consumer's pocket and not taking mm. out within fees. So you'll still have the same, I think it, it, it'll still be the same amount of money being sent, but it's what's oh, being right. kept on the receiving side, which is the issue, you know? Grandma's right. only giving 80 bucks instead of the 100 that was sent to her. Well, now <laughs> what if grandma gets $96 for the $100 yeah. that she sent to her? You know, it's an extra 14 bucks in grandma's pocket. Yeah, so I guess it was the, if, if 25% was, was GDP, 
uh, from remittances, then you know maybe maybe six percent of GDP was being eaten up by fees, and mm. now the goal is to shift that from six to five to four, three, two, one. Exactly. Got it. Um, okay, I want to I want to touch on one other point on uh, on IBEX um, on, on your site. Uh, your your mission is to make Bitcoin easy uh, in big bold letters there. So I want to I want to hear more about like what some of the uh, what, are, what are some of the additional pain points that still exist today that you hope to uh, remove in the future? Um, pain points that we see today, again, adoption and education. Those are, those are the two big ones for me. Um, that's that's we have to just keep hammering home on those, which is like a heap hammering home. And when we say we make Bitcoin easy is, well, with the IBEX pay side, it's just a very easy system to use. It's free. Anyone can use it. If you want to learn about it, if you want to try it for your business, boom, it's there. How easy is that? On the hub side, um, our secret sauce is we manage all the channels and the notes. And a lot of people listening might not know what a channel or a note is. And it's basically what allows for the instant Bitcoin at nearly zero fees to occur. Um, and that channel balancing and node management is complex. So where Bitcoin is very easy, on-chain Bitcoin is very easy to, to move and understand. Lightning is a little bit more complex um, by design. And that's kind of the, the, the heavy lifting that we take on to make sure that um, you're always up and running and you have, you know, 99. 9% uptimes, etc. cetera, um, versus if you try to do it all yourself, you might, you might have a few uh, failed nodes and, and be beating your head against the wall. And why are we doing this? And for a large uh, organization or enterprise customer, they already have a business that they're doing very well in. Um, they got to enterprise level for a reason. They already have their secret formula that makes them great. Don't need to reinvent the wheel and, and try to add lightning to your services yourselves or in-house we can handle those services for you. And so that's what we mean by making uh, Bitcoin easy. And and I, I also like to say our, our mission is, you know, creating a hyper efficient payment network to empower the world into a new era of global commerce. So we are doing those two things, a hyper efficient payment network, which is lightning and empowering the world into a new era of global commerce. Um, and that's anything from remittances to us moving ourselves around the world. I like it. Yeah. Um, it, do you think that it's reasonable to expect lightning infrastructure providers to look a lot like internet providers, like, or, or maybe not internet service providers, but like, think of like what AWS is yep. for a lot of internet Absolutely. apps. So AWS, Microsoft, Azure, um, Google, I forget Google's name. Is it Google cloud? No, Google server, do Google something. Um, but yeah, <laughs> those, uh, it's very, very similar. Um, we, we, we take the heavy lifting where you don't have to go buy a server, set it up, get it running, you know, download the software, et cetera. We, we do all the, the, the heavy lifting there. You just go on and tell us what type of plan you're going to need, how much you plan on moving, and we'll set up the rest. Do you think the margins on that business are going to be meaningfully different or, or more or less the same? Because that, you know, AWS for Amazon has been a, a big contributor to the business and to the value oh, yeah. of the company um, is that is that still going to be true in lightning where we do have this like it's not it's not a gated ecosystem as much as as some of the web two products are. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I'm not sure on uh, Amazon's pricing structure, but uh, at least for us, um, we want to keep things fair. Uh, we obviously have a business to run um, and we, we uh, but when it comes to the world as it is now, I think we can do a lot better um, in terms of fees and structure. So we don't want to make it a race to the bottom, um, but just off of what we can do and with our infrastructure, we can we can make it better. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. Um, I want to jump into a segment I do at the end of every show uh, called the lightning round. Are you ready? All ready. Let's go. I hope you're enjoying the show so far. I just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Stackwork. Stackwork is a lightning powered platform that generates high quality transcripts from all of your audio or video content. Uh, they combine AI engines and hundreds of human workers all over the world who are paid over the lightning network to assemble these transcripts. And that's what lets Stackwork create better, faster, and less expensive transcripts than anyone else. I've used Stackwork to transcribe 
all of my episodes on my personal website. You can check that out. Uh, I just get the stack work file, copy, paste, and go. No additional editing required. If you want to learn more about stack work, you can visit stackwork.com. That is S T A K work.com. Uh, first question for you. What percentage of people in El Salvador use Bitcoin on a regular basis today? I don't know, but I would say 10%. 10%. Okay. That's pretty yeah, good. High, but you know. um, if you could change one thing about Bitcoin, what would you change? Um, interesting. There's a few, <laughs> there's a few things there. I would say, uh, somehow make it easier to understand. Um, I think in the naming conventions used when Bitcoin was created, you know, when we call a, an address, it's really an account, you know, like little things like that, that confuse people, you know, your private keys is your signature. You know, there's, 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 there's certain things that could have just been normalized to current speak to make the adoption process faster. And then I would also say culture. Um, you know, Bitcoin culture is you have a lot of different communities now, and it'd be nice to kind of get back to that grassroots like, hey, be kind, be nice to one another. We're trying to change the world here. No one's right. Um, you know, or I don't say no one's right, but, you know, you, we don't have to be so foot down. Everyone else is wrong. Like it, it goes against the values of Bitcoin, right? Like I, I'm new to this, but I even learned the value of Bitcoin early on. And it was, you know, it's kind of this, there's this underlying generosity that I experienced. There's a ton of energy and a ton of generosity. And those are the two things that got me to switch to this industry. Everyone was willing to help, even if it was a competitor. And then also there's this energy that made me feel like I was part of something that was world changing. But in, you know, I think the bear market, you know, definitely, uh, ruffled some feathers and made everybody a little more aggressive, but the, you, you see it out there and there's people that are so hardcore that they're so right about this and anti everything else. Well, how can we ever be, how can you ever be someone that doesn't believe there could be another horse in the race? If we do that, we're just ignorant. Right. And mm -hmm. I don't believe there is right now, but it doesn't mean there can never be. And then, right. and then just like, keep to, keep to the roots, keep to the kindness, um, keep the helping each other out. And I think we'll do amazing. And when you get to that level of just, you know, there's no other way. Well, you're, you're, you're violating the fundamentals of Bitcoin, which is freedom and freedom of speech and all those things that people push for within it. Um, and, and I, so yeah, a, a switch there would be nice or just, just kind of come back to the middle. And I mean, that's across our entire country right now in the world, right? Where with all these extremes, it's just like, come on, come on back to center guys. You just a little bit more and, and, and yeah. let's all get along. And within, within the Bitcoin community, I'd like to see that more than anything. That's a great answer, right? I think that's very thoughtful and I agree. I agree with that. Um, uh, how many merchants in the world today, this is across all platforms, accept lightning payments? If you have to guess. Well, I can't speak to all the merchants in the world, but for Ibex, we have over 500 merchants currently accepting uh, lightning payments across Europe, LATAM, and United States. Very cool. I even believe um, we were in Australia, actually. Are there any uh, are there any books that have meaningfully changed your view of the world? Um, Bitcoin specific books um, it doesn't have to be Bitcoin specific, but Bitcoins. any any books at all. Well, um, I would say the one that that really got me uh, was there was Learning Bitcoin by Anita. I forget the last name. It's a very Anita small Posh. Book. Anita Posh, exactly. So when I first, you know, I was a newbie. Um, and I, and I needed to, to kind of learn from the ground up. And then obviously the Bitcoin standard read that one and for, as a newbie to the industry, I went for all the basics and each one of them was more valuable than the next. So I'm going to give the shout outs to, to the, to the new, the, the, I guess the, the standard OG Bitcoin books. Um, I was, I'm actually just buying now. Um, mastering Bitcoin, which is kind of looks like one of those Linux uh, programming books, you know, the old school covers with the bugs, the black and white bugs on them or whatever. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm buying that now uh, via a recommendation of the team. Nice. Yeah. Um, if you could hold only one asset for the next decade and it could not be Bitcoin, what asset would you hold? Ooh, tough one. Um, probably just based off of current price in gold. <laughs> I like it, <laughs> but uh, definitely, I don't think any fiat currency in its current in, in its current state. Yeah. Um, okay. Final question: uh, Is there anyone in the industry that you want to give a shout out to, that you look up to, admire? Um, 
feel free to you know fire away any any particular projects or yeah people well that you I kind of have a, a a generic answer for this one that I've been asked before and it's it's my team um, I we I would not be the human I am today without the the support of them and be where I am on my Bitcoin journey without them and I am consistently and constantly learning from them. And that's everywhere from the marketing department all the way through to our CEO. Um, I, every day I come to work and I join my my Zoom meets if I'm not going into the office and I go, wow, you're really smart. <laughs> and thanks for that little tidbit of knowledge that I had no idea about. And even people that work for me. I mean, uh, our head of biz dev for um, Ibex Pay, I, I, she, she has a work ethic that I, I strive to have. Um, so I would say my team is who I look up to the most, uh, in the industry. Awesome. Great answers. Uh, thank you again for taking the time for this conversation. Uh, where can people go to learn more about you and Ibex? Um, Ibex, uh, Mercado on Twitter or Ibex pay on Twitter and on Twitter, I am Sterling underscore Ry R Y. Awesome. Thanks again for the time and uh, hope Thanks we can do it again soon. I appreciate it. Have a great one. You too. All right. In the last seven days, you guys sent in 4,716 sats that came in from 43 different supporters. Uh, let's run through some of the top comments in the last week. First is an anonymous user who sent in 10 sats and said, thanks. Wasn't aware of purse previously in response to episode 70. Crypto Beard says great content. Bot is late says awesome show. Time chain says new to fountain first boost love your show all in response to episode 70. Yellow Eagle says just keeping my channel open in response to episode 67 with edge on the lightning network advertising and, and the creator economy. Uh, Tipping on four says sat is fine podcast. Well done, my friend. Thank you very much. Uh, I am CAIS says another excellent podcast, a hello from a listener in Brazil. Thank you so much for the sats and the comments. Uh, we have lightning. Dave says, hello from Dubai sends in 10 sats in response to episode 70. Thank you to everyone sending in comments and sats. It means a lot. It's really cool that we can get this value for value flywheel spinning. And I can't wait to see what you guys send in this week.